Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters Encounters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's mix another one of these in here while I'm continuing to do some of your mysteries and oddity suggestions. This one has to do with another tale, another encounter associated with the Skinwalker. Crazy stuff, especially with the title, because it's definitely something that you want to avoid doing whenever, let's say, you're in an area that is known to have them. But it comes from the reddit.com website. They're from the subreddit Skinwalkers. This is the title that essentially was the hook that got me interested. It said, I whistled in the woods and something whistled back. And it comes from a user by the name of Certain Intention 594 So let's go ahead and let's share that encounter here. And then I'll get my thoughts and opinions on it, including an almost indirect link to another local lore here in the Texas area, also involving avoiding whistling. So here's what they stated. This is a true story. About two years ago, my boyfriend at the time and I decided to go on a hike right before the sunset. Which, yes, sounds dumb, but it's something we had done multiple times before with no issues. There was something about the eeriness of the woods at night that I liked. Not so much my boyfriend, though. To start our hike, we had to go through some really tall plants and bushes. We were practically in the middle of nowhere. About a mile into the hike, we came across some abandoned structures and sat down to take a breather. I'm not sure exactly what my boyfriend said to me to make me do this, but as a joke, I whistled and said, see, nothing whistled back, we're alone. Not even 20 seconds after saying that, we heard a whistle. It was a bit of a ways from us, but still too close to our liking. We immediately started booking it in the opposite direction of the whistle and didn't look back. After running for as long as we could, we realized we were lost. We wandered around for about 10 minutes before we stumbled across some train tracks that led back into town about a mile or two down the way. It's important to note that these tracks had thick woods lining both sides. The right side is where we came from. At this point, we were walking as we had run out of energy and now felt safe. We were wrong to assume that we were safe. We got to the point where we could see the lights from the town, maybe a quarter to a half a mile away. Down the tracks a little bit, we could very faintly see the outline of what looked to be a deer coming out of the right side of the woods. It stopped in the middle of the tracks and just stood there. I attempted to shine my flashlight. Note, this flashlight was pretty dim. It was a random one found in the back of a junk drawer on it, but as soon as I lifted my light up, it fled. Now, I say fled because ran would not be the accurate way to describe the way it moved. The best way I can describe it is that it looked like it had four broken legs and its body was very low to the ground, yet it had unbelievable speed. It almost looked like a bent and twisted monster out of a horror movie. I shined my light into the woods to left to the left of us as that's where it had ran. And when I did, I saw two glowing eyes that looked to be at least 10 feet in the air. My boyfriend said, what is that? In a very concerned tone, I told him, I don't know. Just don't look at it. Just run. And so we ran and ran until eventually we reached town and then walked back home. This happened about two years ago, and I've tried to come up with a logical explanation after explanation of what I saw that night, and still to this day, I can never find a solid, logical answer other than it being something paranormal. I refused to believe what I had seen for a long time, but I know what I saw, and I know I'm not crazy, as there was another person that witnessed the same thing as me. My boyfriend never spoke of it again and refused to speak about it when I would talk about it. I never went hiking at night after that day. The TLDR version is this. Went hiking at night, whistled as a joke, and something whistled back. Ran until we were walking on train tracks. Saw a quote-unquote deer on the tracks that looked grossly disfigured. Run into the woods and then saw eyes glowing about 10 to 14 feet in the air. Then that's it. That's everything that the user Certain Intention 594 mentioned in their encounter. Let's go ahead and let's talk about that here. First off, that's pretty creepy, right? Here you have the notion that they're in this place, once again, anonymous. I wish that people would post like what woods they would be or what city and so on. But in any case, they were there going out on a hike, 
from sunset pretty much into night and then somehow some way the conversation turned into not whistling now i do and i have heard of that when it comes to not whistling out there in the areas that are barren especially those that are associated with skinwalker land because there you have this thing actually whistling back it's almost like a way to attract its attention so forewarning for everyone out there do not try that you better believe i won't try it on my end if i ever go out there hopefully sometime soon uh, out there in the nevada arizona area to try to see about um some 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 landscapes like going out there in the night and then seeing some stuff out there uh, along with some friends i'm not going to whistle one single bit because yes if you go out there in those barren areas in this case it was the woods Who knows what you might attract, and in this case, something did, and it whistled back not even 20 seconds later, as the user posted. But yeah, this thing then started following them. I got the creeps when I was reading that information, too, about the quote-unquote deer, the way it looked like all of its legs were broken. Talk about a creepy sight. Imagine something like that. The way it was almost moving, I got the idea that it was skittering on the ground. Like, in other words, its legs were broken, causing its belly to almost hit the ground. But it was running, as you could call it that, as quickly as possible, skittering from point A to point B and doing so in probably in a weird, undulating manner like that Silent Hill type shivering stuff that that you see in the movies. And then when that happened, obviously, they were out of there, especially when they saw those two glowing eyes now hope now what seemed to be somewhere nearby hopefully not too near and then it was at least 10 feet in the air crazy stuff and the fact that they decided to go back to that town and who knows if it followed them afterward i don't know but it makes sense that they're not gonna uh, essentially go out there one more time at night just by themselves and see and you know risk something like this now the cryptid that i was mentioning yeah, the other one that's the indirect link is this, La Lechuza. You've heard of La Lechuza, right? I've chronicled it in some of my videos, and then I've also did a Halloween special as well. The story, the lore associated with La Chusa, or as we call it down here in, in some parts of Texas, La Chucha, is the same thing. You don't whistle. Uh, that is the bad thing to do. If you're in a remote Texas area, let's say a small town, and let's say it's an area there that even in the town itself is like kind of a barren uh, what, like area without housing or maybe there's some housing scattered here and there. In other words, it's something like out of the past, not like Austin is now or it's a giant metropolitan city, million plus people. No, we're talking just the opposite. If you're in that area, you don't whistle one bit, not at night. Um, maybe if you want to do it like to call out to someone, you know, hey, get in the car, that type of stuff. That seems to be okay. But if you're doing it with the intention of trying to attract La Chucha, then you will have her come out. I've read stories and then I've talked about that with Virginia uh, from Spectre and then also Josie from Spectre, the group that I'm in. Um, And they've talked about their encounters with La Lechuza. You do not whistle because that will attract her. And that's definitely a bad thing to do. And especially... You'll know you're in the vicinity of her now because if you whistle and then all of a sudden a little bit later you start seeing an owl somewhere nearby, that's bad stuff. I'm getting the shivers right now just thinking about it. So just again, fair warning on that part. Don't whistle in the remote Texas areas, especially land involving La Lechuza, La Chucha, or don't whistle in any remote areas on the uh, Skinwalker side too. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Let me know what your comments are as well. Take care. Bye.